And welcome to another episode of All Run Good with former Michigan standout Richard Ralford out of Riviera Beach, Florida. Played for the Wolverines. He was a standout four years, two-time Big Ten champion. We've done this podcast for, I think, four years now, going on four years. And it's a lot of fun, win or lose. And uh, when when the team's doing great, it's it's obviously terrific. Uh, when the team's going bad, which it is right now, we're still going to make it terrific. Because exactly- I have the guy on the, on the other side of the screen. This guy right over here is the most positive guy that I actually, in all my friendship group, I don't think I know anybody who is a glass half full guy more than Richard Ralph. I don't know uh, if it was your upbringing. I don't know. Well, I, <laughs> we're going to start with that. Uh, and there were well, some other things, including McNeese State last night. But how have you always been this way? People have asked me. Is Richard always that way? I go, yeah, from all the versions that I see. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I must tell you, Tom, you know, I love I love doing this podcast with you. And you sound like all my people at the Y. I'm positive because I tell my friends, <laughs> I have had a wonderful life. Yeah, I have done everything, a lot of things that I've always dreamed of. And I tell my kids the same. Uh, life is good. God is good. And as long as I can stay positive and stay up above ground, I'm going to always be this way. But I got to tell you something right quick, Tom. I looked at Facebook the other day, and I saw this guy in the front of Pizza Bob's. <laughs> and, you know, he had, he, he said the shout out to me. Oh, and, yeah. I was uh, taunting, I was taunting <laughs> <laughs> So all my boys, we started laughing. I said, yeah, that's Tom, man, because he know that's our favorite place. So great, great place. I know you enjoy the shakes. I love the shakes there too. Oh, the shake. Okay, so a couple things. Um, because I'm I like I like things never changing. You know, yes. even going to, you know going to Michigan. You know, you know, forty five years ago, I wanted to stay the same. <laughs> you know, a lot of it. Right. You know, the pizza bar right. three years ago. Remember, it was like, you know, on State Street. Um, you have the coach and four barbershop is a little bit to the south yes. of that, right? Or, or maybe yes. a little bit to the north. I'm trying to think a little bit to the south of that. And now it's to the south. it's moved more to the north. So it's at the corner three years ago, it moved to the corner of of State Street in a hill. So it's up like two doors up. It's got it's okay. on the corner, and um it's like it's you walk into the same environment. You know, you look like you feel like you're in midtown Manhattan, everything's tight, you know. And you got the stairs down there, <laughs> tight little table. Ann Arbor is tight, you know. Yes. It's, almost, yes, it is. it's like it's like the Northeast comes to to Michigan, you know. And, and, and you, know, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yes, and, I do. Uh, I do. I tell you what, uh, I'm not. You know, I'm I'm not I'm not doing a read, you know, for for Pizza Bob's. I don't need to, and they're not paying me. But I'm telling you what. So I had I had my my son Cody, who was at Central Michigan, and coach. He came down. He was down. My daughter, uh, Taylor from Texas, uh, Austin, came up and, you know, they're here for the holiday. And so we wanted to go to a Michigan game. So and they like me to drive around, see their grandma's old or great grandma's old house, stuff like that. My fraternity house. So I said, we got to go to Pizza Bob's. And yes. so I had to get a chocolate shake, you know, because my roommate yes. at the beta house up the street. I don't know how I didn't weigh 250, 300 pounds when I was in college because <laughs> I had a chocolate shake at least. Post eight o'clock at night, you know, I don't know, five, six times a week. Whoa, that's good. Because <laughs> they were so good. They yeah, were so, so they were so good, good man. We 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 loved it. We didn't go as much as we wanted to, but we went about once a week. About once a week when I was there. And I'm gonna tell you the strawberry shakes were amazing. Oh, you got uh, the strawberry. Okay. Yes, I got the strawberry, and I'm gonna tell you, uh, the food was good too. Oh, the I mean, food was I good feel, because okay. Ten bucks. I mean, you go to, and I'm not dissing on Subway, but I mean, your value of the volume of value that you get at Pizza Bob's in Ann Arbor, mind you, which is yes, ground to hang with. Go down to Zingerman's and pay twenty five dollars for a sub. Okay, uh, <laughs> maybe exaggerating, but <laughs> exaggeration alert. But I'm saying, I'm saying it is really, really good, and that's why it is. You look at the pictures, and you know, I get former football players say, "Ah, oh, I love pizza." I mean. Everybody went to Pizza Bob's because it was right, you know, right near the South Quad, West Quad, That's down right. the street. You That's know, exactly you're right. All the way down to the, you know, Chrysler and all that stuff. And uh, That's right. I, I, we, listen, we loved it. I had a target. We loved it, man. I'm going to tell you, we enjoyed it. Me and Butch uh, and Roy, we stayed in there. 
Uh, Antoine came later, but me, Butch, and Roy, we was up in there, man. Like, I know Peace of Mind was like, yo, man, when y'all leave? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so um, quite frankly, uh, the trip before the game to Pizza Bob's mm -hmm. was the highlight of the night. Uh, okay. For, because, uh, you know, 7 o'clock tip-off, Michigan's taking on McNeese State. Now, McNeese State, um, and, and Michigan was 6-6 six and six going into this game last night. So McNeese State has won 10 games, but they haven't really beat anybody, you know. But, right. but you know, I knew that they were going to be – Michigan was a 10-and-a-half-point favorite in this game and lost – uh, by 11, so that's by a 11. one point swing. Uh, it it's insane. Okay, so um, good crowd, kids' day crowd. I mean, crowd was there, alumni band was there. It wasn't bad. I mean, yeah, the students aren't there, the maze rage not there, but there was no excuse for Michigan to to have a pathetic effort when they had a lot of preparation time and. Uh, well, I'll get into my thoughts, but I want your, I want your, as a former player, I want your, I want that initial burst of what your reaction was. Well, I, I know Joe Dumars was there too yesterday, wasn't he? Uh, because oh, that's I Joe Dumars. Do that. no, okay. Yeah, that's Joe, Joe's old school. Uh, I'm going to be honest. I was totally disappointed. Yeah. Because I, <laughs> I was, I was disappointed because of the effort. Yeah. That's my problem. My problem is these guys are, you have to play with pride. Juwan is a prideful guy. He's a Michigan grad and a Michigan former Michigan player. You guys have those guys have to come with a sense of urgency because me and you both know these non-conference games are just that non-conference. When you hit into the Big Ten, let's hear it, man. Things don't change. They, they they change dramatically, dramatically. Because I watch Purdue play. And they don't mess around with these schools like me. They stay. Nobody mess around. Up. Everybody, everybody in the Big Ten last night crushed their opponent. I'll be yes. at yes. their opponents, but they beat them by thirty points. Uh, yes, you know, yes. Teams that are maybe a notch below McNeese State. I don't know where McNeese State's going to be, but you're right. And they took care of business. And the thing of it is, when you're trying to make an NCAA bid, which is what Michigan, and you're sub five hundred going into the Big Ten. I mean, the Big Ten realistically. I mean, they're six to seven right now. Uh, they'll in there as far as total decisions, they'll be playing before going in the Big Ten tournament like thirty three games. So I figure yes. they're going to win. They're going to win like six more games, maybe at six games in the Big Ten, uh, maybe win seven overall because they're one and one and win seven overall. I mean, they're they're going to have, uh, you know, they're going to be in the bottom of the big. They got no shot. They're going to be like you know six or seven games under five hundred. They're not gonna. They're not gonna make the NIT. That's pathetic, Rich. Pathetic, unacceptable. Totally unacceptable. Uh, I've been doing the math as well. Uh, not making the NIT is is heartbreaking. Yeah. Because when your teams have been so successful, now, granted, I tell everybody, Juwan has lost some guys going to the NBA. But now we're two years in to those guys that's in the NBA. We got guys from the portal. Uh, I agree with you when we talked earlier about foot speed. We have none. We have one guy. One guy. And one guy. Because I kept one guy looking at the floor. I looked at the floor. I started, you know, I knew this game was over six minutes in it. So I go, I'm okay. going to just analyze this game of what's wrong with this team. Mm -hmm. And the most glaring, I mean, besides they can't defend, they don't box out, they don't, they turn the ball over 15 times. Uh, McNeese State turned it over four. All that, all that stuff, and we're gonna get into more of those, you know, logistics on this in a second. Right, but right. It, I started just looking at the feet, and Michigan has inferior speed, foot speed to virtually every team they played this year. Yeah, see, it matters. The foot speed matters because that's gonna set the tempo of your game. Yeah, and we have one guy, which is your point guard, who I feel. Is undersized. No matter what anybody says, you can play these non-conference games. But when you go into the Big Ten, we know I see the guards yeah. from other schools, and they're huge. You know, he's six three, six four, six five. I like McDaniel's. He's a good shooter. He's he's fast. But I keep telling everyone, size matters, man. 
I, I, yeah. I listen to Becky Hammond, you know, the coach of the Aces. Yeah. And her analogy on basketball teams, she said on, on a podcast, you will never win a championship with a little guy. Yeah. Never. Really? Really? She made that statement. You, yeah. She said, if you don't have a 6'10 or a 7-foot guy, you're not winning championships. Guards don't win championships. Right. And she's right. And that's what hurts me with, with Reed. Because Reed, when, when Hunter was there, it was like he always had something to prove. Well, now that you're the guy, you're not playing like you're the guy. You're supposed to, you're so, I saw you dominate when Hunter Dickerson was there. Yeah. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm perplexed with you're not scoring a basket. Right. I guess McNeese yeah. State. Yeah. Yeah. What are yeah. you going to do with the big boy from Purdue? <laughs> okay. okay, let me let me throw this little nugget of of stat line at you for Terrace Reed Jr. Okay, okay, twenty two minutes, twenty two minutes. He took one shot from the field, zero for one. He didn't. Uh, he got to the free throw line zero times, zero times. He had four rebounds. Again, and that's what a strength of his supposedly in 22 minutes, four rebounds total. He had four fouls, the same amount of fouls that he had. He turned the ball over once. Um, he did have one steal, but that's your power forward. That you don't have a center. Michigan starts three forwards and a, and two guards. Uh, T. Will and Olivier Kamwa and Terrace. And Terrace would be the de facto center if you want to call that. You know, right. You know? Uh, even though he's a forward by, you know, by trade. That's ridiculous. That's, you know, you that's Listen, not going to work out at all. Anytime. You, I feel like with the, with the with the team that we have, and we talked about this earlier, if you don't make the NIT, it's a disaster. Well, it's a it's disaster. A disaster. If, it's a, you know what, Rich, I'm going to go one further. It's a disaster if you make the, if you have to settle, they, they, they sure. squeezed sure. into the NCAA two years ago, and they did good when they got there. They got the Sweet 16, so they, they kind of saved that a little bit. But last year, you talked about, yeah, Juwan lost two NBA players. Well, he didn't even wake the NCAA last year with two top 15 picks, and sure. that's never sure. happened in NCAA college basketball before. Sure. That, you know, sure. in the modern era of the 60, of the of the expanded – the 64, whenever that started in like 1985, when you were mm -hmm. there, okay, so that's, yep. that's four, four, almost 40 years ago. They've never had two top 15 NBA picks of a team that did not get to the NCAA tournament until last year with the Michigan until Wolves. Last year. Yeah. Yeah. That's bad. That's, what I you. that's, that's bad. bad. That's why I told you pride has to come in. Yeah. These yeah. guys have to play like you, Michigan men. Yeah. You know, if anything, Tom, I would think that the football team would motivate them because <laughs> they motivated us. Yeah. When Jimmy didn't play well and they won games, all yeah. we would say in the locker room is, y'all know we got a whole lot I have. We got to do I have now yeah. because the football team is winning. Yeah, we say it's a football school. Well, we have plenty of, we have plenty of athletics there. It's not just football. But the football is our mainstay, and it brings all the attention to the school. So I feel if you're getting all that attention with the football team, it should make it easier for you to play. Because everybody, like, like, like you said, last night, a nice crowd. Nice crowd at the game. School's not even in yet. Yeah. And you have a nice crowd. You have to figure out as players what you're playing for. Well, You have to figure out what you're playing for. Yeah, so – McNeese State, I'm gonna, I, you know, I and, and they had a few fans there, but I'm saying, you know, it's like when you go into an environment and you don't say, you, you say that was a flat crowd last night, and it wasn't. There were mm -hmm. kids there, okay, little kids. You have to create your own positive environment with your own enthusiasm. The McNeese yes. State bench was doing chants like a, like the Maze Rage would. You know, they're doing all these. The bench was. The bench was providing their team a cheering section on, on trips. I mean, I was amazed by this. I was amazed by this program. And then the other thing I was more amazed, this number 13, 
for people who weren't at the game or watched the game, uh, you know, uh, I feel bad for all of you. <laughs> uh, his name is Sh- Shahada Wells. He's number 13. Get this stat line. 35 minutes of action. He had 30 points. He had 10 rebounds. Okay. He's a point guard. He had 10 rebounds. Okay. He had five steals, five steals. And he had, you know, um, 11 to 13 from the field, 30 freaking points. And um, he was amazing. And six assists. This guy did ever. He was a man among boys relative to the Michigan players. Players. You know, Doug, Doug hit a few threes early on. He ended up with 17 points. T. Will had 20. Uh, Olivier Kamwa had 17 um, as well. And they had Will, Will Cheddar had 11. So they had four guys in double digits. But not, nothing that a man. And he took care of the basketball as a team. As a team, McNeese State turned the ball over four times. Michigan turned the ball wow. over 15 times. 15 there you times. Go. Turn it you know, and, 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 you know, as a team, as a team, McNeese State had 11 steals. 11 steals. Michigan had three. three. And these are, you know, the rebound was about the same. But this is about effort, Rich. And yes, like, effort. like you're saying, there's no, you know, there's no effort on this team. And then, and you know, this is where I'm going back to Juwan Howard. I know he's your buddy. And I, and I love to, I'd rather interview Juwan Howard at press conference than Jim Arbaugh. I mean, at least, you know, it's just easier. Right. You get straight answers. But my point is, I don't think this is working out. I'm sorry. I just don't think this is going to work out moving forward because mm-hmm. but what what's to get excited right now? Because there's going to, you know, because you get, what, what, what's the new, what's the new kid on the block that's coming on? Recruiting is not exhilarating right now coming in. And um, I mean, George Washington is your freshman. He played like seven minutes. He didn't really have an opportunity to do much. But I'm, okay. I think moving forward, what try to excite me, if you could, Rich, about Juwan Howard. Now I know, Miss, you know, and, and you're as positive as it come, and you're a Michigan man, like I know of no other. But what, what can Juwan do? What can, what does he have to do to to change this up? Shake up his lineup. You got to shake up the lineup. You shake up your lineup because you got to find out what guys really wants this. Now, I understand that people, you know, a lot of people are upset with Juwan. Uh, I'm also taking to, to account that Juwan is coming off a major surgery. So he's not going to be as animated as he can. At least I hope he's not because no matter what anybody says, how much you love Michigan, how much yeah. you love basketball, it's not more important than your life. No, I get that. Your life is more important. And I feel that. He has to be a little, a little more calm. Let Martelli listen. Martelli is an accomplished guy. Hall of Famer. He's an amazing coach, a Hall of Famer. Sit back a little bit, a, a minute, and let's check up the lineup. Let's see what, see, let's see the guys who, who really wants to be there. Because my thing is, is you can't have guys coming out there and as much as I like Reed, I go back to him because I think about Roy Tarpin. And how your center is going to make the difference. Like we talked earlier, look at Hunter Dickerson. Yeah. Look at the difference that he makes. When he was there, this kid Reed Jr. was amazing. Now it's like you have nobody to motivate you. You have to get, you have to find self motivation. And for us, Olivia Kamwa, as a transfer captain, mind you, was going to be that guy. Yes, uh, yes, I did know, too. I, I thought that would help Terrace, and he did have 17 points last night. But I me, mean, it, it's almost like with me, you know, the reason I'm critical of Juwan or whatever this, what the, whatever the schematics of this team are, is that it seems like Michigan is in an ISO mode all the time. Okay. I, I don't see, you know, we've talked about this before about, and I, I hate to be mm-hmm. one of those guys that keeps reflecting back to the B line, but when, when there was so much motion offense, that was that looked like it was incredibly well orchestrated. Yes. And the ball, yes. the ball rotation under B line, the ball never hit the floor. Never hit the floor on the rotations. You remember I that? Do, I remember that. Listen, you know I am a B line guy. I I love Coach B line because you're right. I think you know we said before that 
I thought that, you know, players need to have a players only meeting. You don't need no meeting. What you guys need to do is get into the gym and play basketball. Frida would never have us go have a players only meeting unless we chose to. And Frida would be like, hey, y'all just go play. Everybody stop acting like we got, let's play. We recruited you as players, as basketball players. Go out there and do what you do best. I don't think these guys are doing that. I think we're sitting back. Well, who, uh, you, is, okay, so who who is is Juwan not letting them do that? That's the question. You always talked about Rich. You always yes. told me about Freeder. We, for yes. all I've known, you always said, "Why did you like Freeder? Why did you like Freeze? Because he let us play. He rolled out the. He let us play and let us do our thing. Okay, so is yes. that not happening? I think they're playing tight. I think they're they're playing to to not make mistakes. And when you play not to make mistakes, you make mistakes. And I think that the guys respect Juwan tremendously. We're not, it's not a, not a not respect thing, but you can't play afraid. You can't play. I'm going to tell you who doesn't play afraid, Terrence Williams. As much as I get on Terrence for taking all these crazy shots sometimes, <laughs> he does. Terrence consistent, yeah. but he's consistent. Yeah. He's going to do the same thing. And that's why Juwan plays him so much. The other guys have to come, they have to find a way. Because I'm going to be honest, you know, I'm a wheelchair dude. Right now, I'm starting with Terrence. I'm not kidding. Because okay, so Terrence is out. Put Will in, and who? who put else Will Cheddar in. You give a chance, Yo Yo, who who took some shots and they didn't go in last night. Well, um, you, well, Yo Yo is good. I have no problem with the rest of the guys. I want to change Reed and put Cheddar in. You know why? Because Cheddar is gonna. To me, he always reminds me of like Dennis Rodman, but yeah. with better offense. Yeah, because Tim is gonna class. He gonna hit the glass. Play hard. He played hard. Yes, last night. he plays. That's what he does. That's who Cheddar is. He's gonna play hard all the time. Reed needs to find a way to do the same. I'm telling you, Tom. If Reed played harder, got you know, get a few, got a few blocks, a little three blocks, yeah. he could make the difference. Because yeah. if your big man is in the middle balling, everybody else gonna follow suit. Yeah, that's just how it yeah. goes. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, hey, um, the Wolverines uh, next up is January 4th, which is next, uh, what is that, next, next Thursday night, a 9 o'clock mm -hmm. tip, which I hate. They're taking on the Gophers. They had a big win last night over no, no, you know, kind of inferior opponent. But Michigan's got to win. I mean, these games are all – these games are must-win games. I mean, every freaking one of them. I mean, Michigan's going to have yes. to win – they're going to have to win 14 games. To, get, but to make the tournament. I mean, I hate to say it, to get to 20 but you're right. all in the Big Ten tournament. And so, I mean, it's, 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 it's you know, it's daunting. But I just want to see effort and then at the end of the year reevaluate. But what I love about this podcast is you bring it, you know, you bring, you're bring you positive, but you're, you're, you're being very candid about it. And also I want to tell our listeners out there to follow. You can follow, for the people who are not on Facebook, you can follow uh, on Tom's Take Community on our YouTube channel and get all yes. the videos of Richard and I that we're going to have on. And we're going to get some guests on here because when we get into some of these strings of losses, you know what, we're, you, and you and I are going to go back to the old days and just embrace that, okay? So we'll oh, oh, no you. question. We'll get our boys back. We'll get our boys back. And Gary Grant and Will yes. get Wayne, and, and, and your boy Butch. and Wayne Yes, and we'll get our boys back. We'll get our boys we'll back. Philosophically, of what this team has to do, to, to really, Tom. Back. Really, we have to because you know I'm a prideful guy. Yeah. And when I walk around here in Ohio, I talk plenty smack. Yeah. And right now, all they can talk to me about is the basketball team because they can't talk to me about the football team. Yeah. Because yeah. you know, I just told somebody yesterday, you don't like me very much, do you? And the lady says, "Are you a Wolverine?" I said, "Yes, ma'am." And I said. So why don't you like me? She said, because you guys are, are, are beating us. They beat us the last three years. And I said, yeah. you know, but that's not a reason not to like me. We're going to yeah. keep beating you. And she just yeah. fell out laughing. Yeah. She said, I'm yeah. harassing them all, man. That's my, Tom, that's my sense of pride in our football team, my boy Jim Harbaugh. Yeah. 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 So, I, and I, and, you know, you and Jim are buddies and um, you, you've always been supportive of him and mm -hmm. doing a hell of a job this year. This team is ready. Uh, quick prediction of what's going to happen Monday at five o'clock out in Pasadena from, from, a player, from, a cat, from a guy who could have played for the Wolverines, but want him to play. What do you see is going to happen? 
we're going to beat Alabama and, and, and surprise a bunch of people because, believe it or not, all the pundits, all the, the news people are saying Alabama's going to kill us. They just say Alabama's going to kill us. And I'm just sitting back laughing because just like I saw Jimmy's interview, you're galvanizing our players. That's all you're doing. Yeah. You're getting our players all riled up. And, you know, you know, I look forward to the game, man. I'm going to sit you. back and, 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 and just relish this game because yeah. I think we're going to – you know, we talked about pride. Well, the Michigan football team is playing with pride. They are. And so, are. you know, uh, we laugh a little bit about the, 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 the sign-stealing thing because we're all still trying to figure out what is sign-stealing. I don't even know what that is. You know, somebody on the sideline over there giving sign languages. But don't take away from the kids that's playing that football game. Don't right. pull up all these madness. These kids are playing hard. And I'm going to tell you, I'm a big I'm a big Quorum fan because Quorum is a little pit bull to me. Yeah. And so yeah. I'm looking forward to it, Tom. I am, man. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm feeling good about it. We're going to talk about it next week. We'll talk about yeah. after the Minnesota game. I'll hopefully talk about a Michigan victory. He's Richard Ralford yes. here for our final podcast in 2023 we got plenty more of them in 24 and rich happy new year to you and your to you and your tremendous family and down there in the toledo and abouts and uh so enjoy the rose bowl and uh we'll talk to you after the gopher win sounds good tom and happy new year to you and your family man and i look forward to seeing you guys at a game tom all right rich until next time happy new year everyone happy new year everybody <laughs>